Daria. In this video, I want to show you a very detailed way of how to sew invisible zippers. Whether you're a beginner or not, mastering the invisible zipper technique can elevate your sewing skills to new heights. This is how the zippers are sewing look. The start of the zipper is truly invisible, the waist seam is perfectly aligned, and the top edges of both sides create a single line. So let's see how I achieve this. Here are the unfinished center back seam edges of the dress where I want to insert the zipper. The first important thing that makes your zipper way neater is interfacing edges. I will use this iron-on stay tape. It's 15 mm wide and absolutely doesn't stretch. I will apply this stay tape as long as the actual zipper length is. For the 1 cm seam allowance, I recommend using up to 2 cm wide but not less than the seam allowance, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. I applied the both edges from the wrong side. Normally, I will apply it before the waist seam is done, but as my dress is already assembled, I skip the interfacing on the waist seam allowance. Then I finish the center back edges on both pieces with an overlocker working from the right side. So our top plastic stub should be placed 12 or 13 mm from the top edge and the bottom stub here. But the trick is that the back seam will start 2 cm higher than the zipper stub. Further you'll see why. I place both back pieces right sides together and stitch the center back seam starting from the upper marking. This is the back center seam and now I press the stitch section open. Now the zipper sew in. I place the edge and the zipper right sides together. The top zipper stop should be placed 12 mm from the top edge. I place the zipper right side down to make a basting stitch first. I just stitch the zipper tape to the edge. I stitch until the center back seam. I align the zipper tail on the remaining tail with the back seam and insert the pin so the second side will be stitched on the same level. Now it's a perfect moment to make your waist seam matching on the both sides. I can see where the second side of the waist seam should be located, so I make a marking and pin it here securely. And I'm stitching the second side starting from the bottom. And don't forget to align the top zipper stop with the marking. We have this tail left and now we can check if the zipper is located properly so far. And next I'm hiding the zipper slider under the tail as there's an opening, to sew the zipper next to the teeth and to stop right at the back seam start. This is why I needed these two additional centimeters. To stitch the close to the teeth, I'm using a special invisible zipper foot. They can look differently, but the purpose is to get the teeth as close as possible. I know some people press the teeth to flatten them slightly, but I don't do it. I just unfold them with fingers on every section I go and work with really short sections. Also, I suggest setting a stitch length shorter, about 2 mm. Long stitches make the lower fabric under the foot shrink, which makes small unpleasant gatherings along the zipper.
At the bottom of the zipper, it's important to make the last stitches down to the back seam start. Exactly down to this point, but not further. Even one stitch further towards the seam will make the end of the zipper visible from the right side. Everything is the same on the second side, starting from the top. So the zipper attaching stitch line and the center seam create one line together. Now I pull the zipper slider through the remaining small hole between the zipper and the back seam and close the zipper. This is a bit of worrying but satisfying moment to see that the waist seam is matching. Don't leave this tail as it is. Just stitch the zipper tapes to the seam allowances to prevent the zipper from rolling to the right side when open. This time with a regular foot. Press the zipper lightly. Here is our perfect invisible zipper end with the marking the seam through. Also, I lightly press under the zipper tapes so the seam allowances won't print in and be seen from the right side. What a satisfaction! Everything is matched perfectly. If the invisible zipper is sewn correctly, then it should look like this when you pull two sides in opposite directions. And when the top edges are perfectly aligned, it's very easy to attach the facing. Here I have a long facing, which will hide the entire bodice, but the same principle works with a shorter facing. I unfold the zipper tape and stitch the facing with the right side of the dress. After that, double check if the top seams appear matching and create the single line with the zipper slider. The seam allowance is toward the facing and I understitch the facing. This is how it looks and now it's important to see where the fault line is and it's on the main bodice, not on the top seam. So fold the facing toward the right side with the seam allowance going toward the same side too and attach along the zipper tape. I use this kind of foot to make it close to the teeth. If everything is made correctly, you don't have to trim any corners here. Just beat the end of the zipper tape a little bit toward the edge. Turn the corner right side out and here's the perfect corner. Here is the wrong side and I press the face in a little. Sometimes you can even understitch it. An important feature of a quality sewing zipper is that its slider creates a single line with the top edges. If you're curious of how I'm going to attach the face in, I'm just pre-press it and pin along the waist, hiding the seam and will stitch in a ditch from the right side. Here's the finished dress, tell me if you like it in general. It's going to be my simple summer dress and it has pockets. If you have any ideas for easy but in-depth tutorials like this, let me know. Thank you for watching.